Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you and praise you. We honor you on this wonderful day um, where we have people coming from all parts of the country coming together to study. We ask that you'll guide us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Holy Spirit, send your anointing. Anoint us. Anoint our class tonight. Bless each and every one. Uh, bless them that they can hear and participate. And we pray that you'll guide us through this course, uh, Introduction to the Prophetic, where there's a lot of material to be studied. And so we ask for your guidance. And we praise you. We thank you. We ask that you bless the families that are on, uh, the individuals and their families. Watch over them and keep them. And we lift up Christy McDaniel and her family as she goes, as she's with her son in a pre-op uh, environment. And that's that, you, that you'll bless and heal in that situation. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. We've got enough to get started. Uh, we want to see if Sandra Lee can come back on and say hello to us again. Okay, well, we don't know what's happening in Canada, but we know God's going to take good care of her. <laughs> okay, let's see some announcements. Um, starting next week, we will be using a different um, provider for our online class. This will be the last night on the um, dial-in or the um, computer access, internet access for gotomeetme.com. I'm going to be using freeconference.com starting next week. I will send you in an email the connection um, for your internet or your phone for freeconference.com. Add to that um, next week also, and actually starting tomorrow, all of our classes will be available on the Paul Begley website. And so I will send you tonight, I will send you the uh, connection for how to access the video of the um, classes on the Paul Begley website. And you'll have access to that tomorrow. I will still make these uh, classes available if you want to through YouTube. But we'll try. We're going to be on Paul's website. And um, so if you happen to miss a class, all of the, our classes will be archived on Paul Begley's website, www.paulbegley.com. But I will send you a special um, link. I'll, spe I'll send you a special link to these um, classes. Praise God. Okay, so that's starting um, tonight for that special link. But starting next week, we'll be on a... Um, different provider, using a different provider for our courses. Praise God. So we're trying to um, get everything in sync. And also, uh, this Sunday, we have our online church using the same connection you've been using in the past several weeks. But starting the first week of July, Ju July 1st, on July 1st, we'll be using a different connection for the Sunday online class and I, online church. I will send that information out to you. So I know many, several of you are following us on Sundays, and uh, I'll make sure you get the connection. Praise God. We're moving right along and um, trying to uh, perfect the ministry, getting uh, better service. All right. Praise God. Okay, tonight we're looking at lesson two. In our course, Intro to the Prophetic, and we learned last week, the uh, prophecy is for everyone. It's for everyone, and it's nothing new. Prophecy has existed since the Lord began uh, the world. 
Um, we, we see God uh, speaking prophetically through Abel and uh, even uh, Moses. And uh, so we go all the way back to, to Abel, um, the, um, the son of, of, of um, Adam and Eve. So we're, we're looking at intro to the prophetic and we're looking at what is prophecy. Prophecy is God speaking to people men, women, boys and girls, and people speaking to people on God's behalf. The prophet is one who speaks um, to people from God. Okay, so tonight we're going to review, uh, just a little review of tape number four. Your tape for this week is tape number four, James Gold's tape number four. Um, the assignment called for five tapes, but we're not going to tax you to listen to five tapes. I've chosen tape number four. It's an awesome tape. I told you, when you listen to it, get your tissues out. Get out the Kleenex. It's a, it's a, a heart-rending, uh, uh, very touching tape. It's awesome. And so we're going to just uh, review a little bit of that. I'll give you some of my notes from tape number four then we're going to look at pages three and five and eight in our student manual that's your white binder and then we're going to just review um, some pages in prophetic foundations and um, then we we end the class okay you have assignments in user-friendly prophecy and uh, we'll take a look at the assignments that are due and um, we should have a good class. Praise God. Once again, we welcome you, and uh, may God bless you. In, um, in listening to James Gall, and I've listened to that tape on several occasions, even when I took the course, uh, I like tape number four. Prophetic ministry began with the foundation of the world. It has never ceased. Prophetic ministry goes on. And uh, in this in this tape, James Gall, who is also the author of Prophetic Foundations, uh, you have to listen to the tape and read the textbook. Um, he talks about New Testament church prophets. He, he mentions the school of the prophets. And the school of, prophets, of the prophets probably goes back to the time of Samuel. We see the school of the prophets in operation uh, during the time of Elijah and Elisha. Okay, in this fourth tape, uh, Dr. Gola gives a history of the prophetic. He talks about Anna the prophetess who was waiting for uh, the consummation of Israel. In other words, she was waiting to see the Christ, uh, Jesus. And um, when they brought Jesus to the temple uh, to be circumcised, um, then... Anna saw Jesus and she spoke prophetically. Simeon, the seer, the prophet, was also there. So Anna, the prophetess, and Simeon, the prophet, prophet, were there. And Simeon said his eyes would not, God told him, his eyes would not be closed until he had seen the consummation of Israel. That was a word from the Lord to Simeon. Anna had a prophetic ministry. She ministered in the temple unto the Lord for several years. Uh, Anna was a, a widow. Um, she had uh, lived with her husband for seven years, and he died, and she was in her 80s. And she, So she dedicated her life to ministering unto the Lord in the temple and being a blessing to the people. She gave herself over to fasting and prayer for the coming of the Messiah for over 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is prophetic ministry. This is uh, someone who spent her time before the Lord to hear the voice of the Lord and to uh, hear what God had to say and to seek the Lord. She spent over 60 years, ladies and gentlemen, ministering unto the Lord, hearing his voice. And so when as uh, each of you has studied the course communion with God and you've learned techniques into how to hear God's voice and how to quiet yourself and humble yourself and wait 
on the Lord. Um, we know we had some people in class, they uh, were a little itchy, uh, couldn't wait on the Lord. But you've got to wait on the Lord. It takes time. God's got his timing about everything. He will speak to you. He will show up. He will reveal himself to you. So take a lesson from Anna, the prophetess. She waited over 60 years for the Lord. And she finally got to see the, the Jesus the baby uh, in his infancy. And, uh, and, and her life was blessed. Uh, she saw the one who was come who had come to redeem Israel and mankind and so we also listen to uh, James Gall and he says that God will have a whole company of Annas and Simeons prophesying and praying for the second coming of the Messiah there are people all over the world <coughs> who are praying for the second coming of the Messiah People who have dedicated their lives waiting to waiting on the Lord to come back and living holy and righteous before the Lord and interceding and uh, interceding for others. We have people in the Paul Begley uh, prophet, prophetic ministry who are intercessors. And I want to commend Katz uh, for uh, leading the intercessors. Uh, throughout each day, leading intercessors, praying, praying, praying for people. James Gall mentions Agabus in the New Testament. He was a prophet. Um, and how um, many, many people are praying that God will raise up a whole school of prophets, that God will raise up a cadre of prophets in these last days. Okay, um, Agabus prophesied that there would be a famine, and that famine did take place. In Acts chapter 13, we see the prophets, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I love Acts chapter 13 because it shows us, it shows us um, how God is inclusive and that God is no respecter of persons. And, and this Acts chapter 13 and seeing the prophets working together and the church working together in Antioch, it just blows uh, racism and ethnicity out of the window, blows it out of the water. When uh, you look at Acts chapter 13, you see Barnabas and Paul and Menachem and, and Simeon Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, uh, two of these uh, people were from Africa, Simeon, the Niger, uh, from uh, the country of Niger uh, in Central Africa, uh, Lucius of Cyrene. Um, Lucius was probably a companion of Simon of Cyrene uh, who carried the cross of Jesus, uh, a black man. Um, we see an Arab, Menachem, uh, he was Arab. We see Paul. Paul was a Turk. Paul was from Turkey, and Barnabas a Jew. And we see we see several races coming together in this great church of Antioch. What a beautiful church! What a wonderful church where people from different cultures came together in the name of Jesus. They received Jesus, and you see people getting along. We see people of different skin colors different cultural backgrounds, getting along in this great church of, of Antioch. And in Acts chapter 13, the Holy Spirit speaks to five of these prophets, uh, Paul, Barnabas, Menachem, and Simeon, and Lucius, and says, set apart for me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have for them. Ladies and gentlemen, I love uh, Acts chapter 13 because it lets us know what the church ought to be. This is the way the church ought to be operating in America. This is the way the church ought to be operating all over the world. We see prophets from different environments, different cultural backgrounds, working together in the same ministry, ladies and gentlemen. They're not trying to outdo one another. They're not 
uh, stabbing one another in the back. They're not uh, operating uh, 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 based on race, uh, skin color, but they're all uh, coming together and they're praying together. These five prophets pray together to get a word from the Lord. And the Lord said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work I have for them. And out of this, out of this, we have the great first missionary journey and out of the first missionary journey comes the second missionary journey and out of the second comes the third the the whole world was changed ladies and gentlemen the whole world was changed because these prophets from different racial backgrounds they put racism aside they put their ethnicity aside uh, and 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 they love one another and they ministered unto the Lord and ministered to one another and out of this God separated two of them from that group and sent them on the first missionary journey and I love it I love it I love it that's the way the church ought to be operating praise God as uh, we continue with some of uh, James Gall's tape uh, he talks about send a school of prophets send the school of prophets I've been praying much about this uh, uh, especially through the prayer, through the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, raise up God, raise up an army of prophets. God, raise up a cadre of prophets, and 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 you you are you are uh, a result of of, of of this prayer. You are a result. A result. God is using you. God's using Zisla, Sandra Lee, Jackie Fisher, uh, C.K. and uh, Roy and and Ryan and so and men and all of you God is using you he's raising up a school of prophets you're learning you're studying you're hearing from God and you're speaking what God tells you to others you're 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 operating in the prophetic hallelujah we shout and give God the praise now I'm ministering on Sunday mornings about the gifts of the spirit and the scripture says uh, we should seek uh, love, desire love, seek love, and then seek spiritual gifts. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, seek spiritual gifts. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14 talks about spiritual gifts. Seek spiritual gifts. Operate in love. Desire prophecy. Prophecy. Desire prophecy. And um, we're, we're, we're ministering, we're talking about, we're teaching about the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy. We're going to be ministering on the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues. We're going to min be ministering in the next few weeks on the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles. And so uh, we're just taking time in, on Sunday mornings and just uh, teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And my theme, my theme for this year is everybody ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And everyone ought to be operating in the gifts. Paul told young Timothy, stir up the gift that is in you. And God has given to each of you gifts. Praise God. And uh, don't get hung up on tongues. We're going to teach on tongues, and we're going to teach it properly. We're going to teach about the interpretation of tongues. But tongues is not the greatest gift, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture teaches us that we ought to uh, seek the gift of prophecy, where we speak in our own language to people who understand what we're saying. It's fine. Uh, tongues has its purpose, and prophecy has its purpose uh, tongues is a person talking to God you're edifying uh, you're edifying self basically and and you're 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 fine-tuning your ministry unto the Lord and speaking a language unto God um, that uh, only you and God and the Holy Ghost will know about if you ask God for the gift of interpretation so the Bible teaches us how to use the gift of tongues and when and where and how to operate in order uh, so much abuse is going on in the church so I'm so glad the Lord has laid on my heart to minister on the gifts of the Spirit the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the gift of prophecy is the gift 
uh, the Bible says seek prophecy, seek to prophesy. Uh, but we must do all of this in love. If you're operating in gifts, you've got gifts. And, and the scripture says God has given to every one of us a measure of faith, a measure of faith. He's given everyone the same measure of faith. And so we can operate in the gifts. And so we see in the church in Antioch, these five men, one, one was an Arab, two were black, uh, one was a, a Jew, and one was a Greek. Uh, we, and we see them working together and loving one another and putting their differences aside and, and, and working towards the greater good, the propagation of the gospel, honoring God, worshiping God, being instruments of God, being prophetic instruments of God. Oh, I pray that this will happen in this nation and the nations and that we as believers will stop fighting and being jealous of one another. Uh, he's jealous of her because she speaks in tongues. Uh, uh, she's jealous of him because he's got the gift of, of healing. Uh, uh, he can work miracles. Uh, uh, he's got a prophetic ministry. He's known worldwide and 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 and. And, and, and she's got uh, the gift of faith, um, and, and people are fighting against one another. But, oh, praise God for the day when the church will see that it's all about Jesus Christ and not about us. Praise God. Okay, so I'll just leave that, and uh, I'll pick that up. I'll pick up on that come Sunday morning. I hope you can join me on Sunday mornings. And... Um, our time is 11 o'clock Eastern time, so we do not conflict with uh, Paul, Pastor Paul's live service uh, because there's an hour difference between when we finish and when um, Past Pastor Paul finishes. There's an hour difference. Knox, Indiana is a different uh, time zone. It's central, and uh, our time zone is Eastern. Praise God. And we're, we're doing this to... to edify the body of Christ, to help build up the body of Christ, to help strengthen you in areas. And I'm so glad the Lord is, has given me this, uh, this, this portion of ministry to edify, to teach, to train. You know, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And uh, there's no excuse. There's no excuse, ladies and gentlemen, for the church to be continuing to walk in ignorance. There's no excuse for the church to still be in the dark ages and uh, fighting healing, fighting tongues, fighting prophecy, fighting all this when God puts it all together. And the scripture just teaches us so much. In Ephesians, the, the scripture teaches us that we are all parts of the body fitly joined together. So let's fitly join together and, and let the gifts strengthen one another. Uh, uh, the hand cannot say to the leg, I have no need of you. Uh, the head cannot say to the knee, I have no need of you. Uh, and every part of the body has its function. And so every part of the body of Christ has its function. And so the Holy Spirit, let us not grieve the Holy Spirit by being jealous of, of people because their gifts are different or you don't have the gift they have. Be grateful, be grateful. Thank God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and use the gift that God has given you to the glory and honor of God like the five prophets did in the church of Antioch. Praise God. I said I was going to get away from that, but I'm still back there. Okay. Um, James Gall even says, uh, the spirit of prophecy, it's all about him. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. And so we're to help train the body of Christ and encourage them in the word of God. Uh, he says, prophets are strange folks. So if people start looking at you like you're strange, hey, Zizla, if they start looking at you like you're strange, don't worry about it. Just accept being strange. Okay, I'm strange, but I've got, I've got the greater one living on the inside of me. Love them all. Love the people when they uh, hate on you, when they uh, 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 do not treat you right. Love them anyway. Love the diversification. 
and the uniqueness of the prophets. Love people. Love, love the diversification of the prophets. Everybody's not going to be like you. They're not going to be like me. But love them. Praise God. Because we're all part of of the body of Christ. Some of us are the eyes. Some of us are the ears. Some of us are the nose. Some of us are the neck. Some of us are the shoulders. But we work together. We work together, ladies and gentlemen, to the glory and honor of God. James Gold says, I, just, I don't just want to have a hot beginning. I want to have a flaming end. I love that. I love that, man. He said, I don't want to just have a hot beginning. We see a lot of people, they're burning, man. They're burning, man. When they get first get saved, first get baptized in the Holy Ghost, man, they're blazing. But but we're talking about we're talking about perseverance, hanging in there. We're talking about being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're talking about praising God when troubles come we're talking about praising God when the doctor gives you a bad report we're talking about uh, blazing blazing even until the end we're talking about getting old with dignity praise God I'm getting old with dignity praise God hallelujah in my 70s I'm just praising God getting stronger every day in the Lord but getting old with dignity we're talking about when the aches and the pains hit your body uh, when the friends fall off and the people don't call you like they used to you're still blazing for Jesus that's what James Gall is talking about I mean this tape number four is going to bring tears to your eyes praise God he says return to the high places of worship return to the high place make sure you have that high place of worship that altar unto the Lord in your heart and return there return there no matter how people treat you no matter what they say about you return to the high places of worship where you can go to your own altar and lift up the name of Jesus uh, Gaul says, applaud Jesus, not man. Do not applaud a man or a woman. And, and, and in this society where we live, people are, 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 they love to name drop. They love to piggyback on to people's success. And uh, uh, they like to follow successful people. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, applaud Jesus. Give God the glory. Uh, don't give a glory, the glory to any mankind. And then I like this part. He says, receive the accolades of man. They're going to pat you on your back, and they're going to build you up and pump you up. And I like, I like it when you all send me emails, good, good teaching, uh, Dr. Carter, good teaching, Pastor. I love it. Praise God. But James Gall says, receive the accolades of men. But at the end of the day, listen to this, at the end of the day, Place all of the accolades and the trophies and the honors, place them at the feet of Jesus and worship him. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, it's all right for you all to send me emails and all that, but I'm to place these accolades at the feet of Jesus because it's God, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's the Holy Spirit in us, the hope of glory. It's the Holy One, uh, the Hagios Numa, the Spirit of the Lord, the breath of God keeping us. And so when people applaud us and, and, uh, and, and, and make us feel good about what we're doing and about ourselves, it's all right, but place these accolades and applauses and trophies at the feet of Jesus at the end of each day and worship him. Thank God for what he's done uh, to you and through you uh, each day. Uh, thank him. Thank him for who he is because it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. And then I love this fourth uh, tape, this fourth audio. And he says, separate me unto you, Lord. I love it. I love it. He said, separate me me unto you Lord and at the end of the tape I pray that you'll write this down uh, separate me unto you Lord then separate me unto the work separate me unto you Lord and then separate me unto the work because when we look at uh, Paul Barnabas Menachem uh, Simeon Niger and um, um, 
the uh, Lucius of Cyrene, the Holy Spirit said, separate these men, un separate Paul and Barnabas unto me. The Holy Spirit did not say, separate these men unto my work. First of all, we must be separated unto God. In other words, God wants to sanctify us unto himself. When a man or a woman is separated unto God, then God can do anything through that person. Okay? Uh, the problem is many people don't want to be separated unto God. They want to do good works. They want the great ministry. They want to achieve things. And so many people are separated unto their works. They're separated unto their job. They're separated unto success. They're separated unto material things. But God wants us to be separated unto him. Even uh, with husband and wife, God wants husband loving him more than he loves wife. God wants wife loving God more than loving husband. Uh, but he wants you to love your husband. He wants you to love your wife, but he wants to be first. And so uh, my prayer is that God will separate us unto him and then separate us unto the work he's called us to do because he's called each of us in, unto a different work. And so when we're, our hearts are sanctified and separated unto him, praise God, then he can use us. And uh, Gaul uh, culminates this great uh, teaching with, let my oil never run out. Let my oil never run out. I pray that my lamp will always be burning. I was <coughs> talking to Jackie one day. We were coming down off the mountain walking in our daily mountain our daily mountain walk and uh, I share with her about uh, Elisha Elisha even after he was dead ladies and gentlemen there was oil in his bones there was an anointing in, I mean ladies and gentlemen Elisha was dead they had buried him in a cave and one day the Amalekites were fighting against Israel and the Amalekites were on the run and they were carrying a, a wounded soldier with them, and that soldier died. And so uh, the Amalekites were running for their lives, and so they had to get rid of the body of the, of the soldier. And so they threw that soldier into a cave, and the soldier landed on the bones of Elisha. It's, it's in Scripture. It's in the Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. The soldier, the dead soldier, landed on the bones of the prophet Elisha. And there was still, ladies and gentlemen, Elisha had been long dead, but there was still an anointing in his bones. And when the dead man touched the bones of Elisha, the dead man came back to life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. So that's the way I want to I wanna burn for Jesus. I want to burn. I, I want... I want my oil to keep on burning long after I'm gone. Uh, 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 the oil, the anointing, the things we've done for Christ, the things that we've said for Christ will last. Uh, it's only what you do for Christ that's going to last. I want to I wanna see uh, 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 people healed uh, when they, when, 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 Zisla takes a, a, a handkerchief and sends it to someone. That person touches that handkerchief and is healed. According to Acts chapter 19, verse 11, that happens. Uh, or, or Jackie Fisher sends a prayer cloth uh, to someone in California, and that person receives that prayer cloth in the name of Jesus and is healed. I'm, I'm talking about letting your oil Keep on burning, even, and I pray that each of you live a long life, and even after you're gone, uh, 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 they'll, touch a, they'll touch a letter, some notes that you took, some notes that you took 
during your course introduction to the prophetic and the anointing is still on the notes ladies and gentlemen and your great 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 grandchild reads that note or reads that read your journal the anointing still on your journal and your great 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 grandchild gets say oh i mean i'm talking about let your light so shine let your oil burn i know i'm losing my mind here ladies and gentlemen i'm losing it but i'm just saying about the goodness of jesus can you just see that soldier that dead soldier they threw him they threw his dead body on elisha's bones and there was still an anointing in elisha's bones that's what we're talking about we're talking about the power of the holy spirit let the holy spirit fill you with his presence let him fill you whichever way he wants to fill you and you let him use you to the praise of of his glory and don't allow any jealousy any bitterness any anger any hatred any racism don't let anything block the flow of the holy spirit in you let the holy spirit bubble up in you like rivers of living water that's what we're talking about prophetic ministry and so you speak a word you speak a word and and you send a text message to someone in ethiopia and and the person in ethiopia reads that text message and gets saved ladies and gentlemen i've had experiences where uh uh, uh god has used me to to talk to people on the phone and and they wanted the baptism of the holy ghost and they received it by phone ladies and gentlemen we're talking about people in foreign nations getting healed getting healed because we talk to them here in America and and they receive the phone call in another nation and 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 you pray the prayer of faith and and the prayer of healing and they get healed ladies and gentlemen we're talking about let your oil burn let your oil burn let your oil, uh, uh that's what we're talking about you're talking about burn baby burn that's the kind of burning i want to do burn baby burn i want to burn up for jesus i want i want jesus to burn through me i want him to burn through you and that's what's going to change this world that's what's going to change this nation flip the script flip this nation and the nations of the world upside down so when you listen to james gall's tape you can understand the anointing that came upon him as he made that tape the anointing praise god and that flow that flow okay so i spent a lot of our time lord jesus the time is getting away from us i spent a lot of our time uh, describing um the this powerful anointed uh audio that we're assigned to listen to in uh to in in this week's lesson okay in your student manual in your student manual on page three if you'll turn to page three in your student manual you'll see the assignment for lesson two the assignment is listen to cds two to six but cross out two to the six and write in number four lesson assignment four memorize acts 3 21 let memorize acts 3 21 god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began prophecy is nothing new god has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began and then uh, your assignment prayerfully read chapters four through six of user-friendly prophecy and complete the uh, related related exercises that are found and we go to that section next okay so you're to read chapters four through six of user-friendly prophecy by larry randolph we haven't mentioned much about randolph uh but we've read his book and got notes in uh underlines and underscore all through that book uh great book and a great teaching uh this is where we get uh our assignments in the orange section of your binder section two section two also complete and correct and correct self-test number two you are to do self-test number two that's in section three 
of your binder. So your homework looks like for this week, uh, tape number four, uh, page three of your manual, page five of your manual, self-test number two on page eight, and then your readings in prophetic foundations and your readings in user-friendly prophecy. This course is very comprehensive, very demanding, but when you end this course 10 weeks from now, 10 weeks from now, you're going to say, wow, wow, what I have learned. When you put together these first three courses you've taken, communion with God, understanding the Bible, and introduction to the prophetic, you are well on your way. And um, then you're also knocking on the door of an associate degree with the Paul Begley uh, School of Prophecy. By the way, we have begun the... Um, the um, accreditation process and um, we, we're, we're, we're into phase one of the accreditation process. It's a three-year process. So once uh, the school is fully accredited, um, each of you, uh, your courses, your coursework will be retroactively uh, uh, added on and, and you'll be accredited uh, back to the time when you started. Okay, page five. Turn to page five in your um, binder. These are the questions that you're to answer and to send in to me um, as your homework. Number one, in your own words and with biblical support, discuss the relationship between speaking in tongues and prophesying. We don't want you to go into a, 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 a long uh, dialogue um, concerning tongues and prophesy, prophesying, um, but there's a difference. And basically, I'm looking for uh, this. Tongues edifies the believer. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's a communication between the believer and God for the edification of the believer and we get that from Jude it says build up your most holy faith um, and then um, prophesying is speaking God speaking to you through you to others tongues is you speaking to God in an unknown language and prophesying is you speaking to people in the vernacular that uh, you're accustomed to speaking in. In your own words, number two, and with biblical support, discuss the possibility of laymen being used in the gift of prophecy. Okay, we've already given you Acts 13. That's a biblical uh, reference of laymen being used in the gift of prophecy. We've looked at, looked at Agabus. We've looked at uh, uh, Simeon. We look, we've looked at Anna the prophetess. There are many biblical um, um, verses that uh, suggest laymen, uh, people who were not called to to uh, formal ministry, lay persons, even able in 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 the state of death, Abel's blood cried out to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Abel's blood uh, prophesied. Okay. Uh, Number three, in your own words and with biblical support, discuss your beliefs concerning the scriptural ability of women to operate in the gift of prophecy. Ladies, 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 do not accept this. Uh, 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 do not accept this uh, thing, this man thing that uh, God doesn't call a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, God brought us forth through a woman and the way I look at it hey and this is not scriptural but I was I came out of a woman's womb and 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 if a woman can bring me into this world she can surely teach me about Jesus come on somebody and give God some praise if a woman can bring me into this world and she surely did I didn't come out of my daddy's belly then a woman can teach me about Jesus so don't don't accept this this uh, 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 
uh, manhood thing and this 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 uh, this this big lie that's told by the world that a woman can't preach, a woman can't prophesy, and uh, we've got so many insecure men and, and and so many ignorant. We've got a lot of ignorant men in the ministry. We've got. <coughs> We've got we've got whole denominations that are operating in ignorance. A woman can't teach me anything. Uh, a woman can't preach. And this and and this is 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 popular not only in the United States but in other nations of the world. Well, I say to them, read your scripture. Read your scripture. So you answer that and throw some scripture in your answer. Number. Four, in your own words and with biblical support, discuss your beliefs concerning the scriptural ability of children to operate in the gift of prophecy. Children can prophesy, ladies and gentlemen. Children can prophesy. Out of the mouths of babes thou hast ordained strength. That's a scripture for you right there. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength. Children can prophesy. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say this, but in, I'm going to say it. In some households, children have more sense than their parents. Uh, uh, children, children love the Lord. Children have an affinity for the Lord. And, 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 and there are parents who need to listen to their children. God speaks to children. So I was raised in an atmosphere uh, growing up in the 40s and 50s uh, a child is supposed, to, is supposed to be quiet. You just get in your place in your little corner and you be quiet. You don't know anything. And, and, and so they pushed us into a corner. But children can see things. My mother told me uh, before she passed a couple years ago, she said when you were a child, you would see visions. You would see things. Uh, uh, but they would hush you up. They wouldn't let you talk. So ladies and gentlemen, God speaks to through children he speaks to children it's biblical and it's sound number five if you are a parent and you believe that children can legitimately legitimately prophesy ask the Lord what he would have you specifically do to simulate and encourage the gift of prophecy in your child record what he tells you and how you are obedient to him <clears throat> I was so blessed this past week when my oldest daughter and her husband and uh, uh, our granddaughter visited, visited with us. They drove down from Pennsylvania to surprise me for Father's Day. And um, my, my granddaughter is an artist. She, she has, God has laid his hands on this child to draw and to paint. She uses acrylics uh, uh, when she paints and what God gives her. And ladies and gentlemen, God speaks through artists. Many artists prophesy with their artwork. Movie makers prophesy through their movie productions. Uh, and it's not just speaking, talking, but God has given some like uh, um, Sharon Hudson in the course we've uh, taken recently. Sharon can sing uh, scriptures and memorize them and teach others how to memorize scripture. So prophecy is not just speaking for on behalf of God. Prophecy may be drawing what God gives. Prophecy may be taking the vision God gives you and putting it on canvas. Prophecy may be uh, taking the, the, the vision that God gave you and, and, and translating it into words and speaking to mankind. So don't put a cap on prophecy and don't put a cap on who can prophesy don't shush or hush the children because the children hear from God many children <coughs> hear from God number six your question what are the guidelines your church has established and so finish up these questions um, just want to remind you that you're responsible for the questions on page five of the manual and then in prophetic foundations in your workbook prophetic foundations pages 21 through 26 you're to read those pages and take the self-test on page 27 I do not 
require the self-test. You take the self-test and answer them yourself for yourself. The answers are in the back of that segment of the book. And that's basically what you're responsible for for this week. Okay, are there, I know I did a whole lot of talking, I didn't include you all, I apologize, but got kind of fired up. Uh, are there any questions from anyone about the uh, assignments? I want to thank my precious wife, Jackie, for monitoring the chat room, and, and uh, I think she answers a lot of your questions, and I, I appreciate you very much, Jackie. Uh, are there any questions from anyone concerning Lesson 2? Any comments? Somebody please say something so I know you're out there. Jackie, any, any questions? Hi. Hi. This is Sandra. Sandra, God when, bless you. When I was looking at uh, the memory work in Acts 3, 21, mm -hmm. um, I saw there that there's a verse that says, the, you are the sons of the prophet. You are sons of the prophet and of the covenant which God made with your fathers. Like, Peter was preaching after he had healed the lame, lame man. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I didn't notice that before. Yes. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, <clears throat> and Sandra, I want to commend you on, on being sharp. Okay. All of, all of <laughs> every one of you are sharp. But we've got, we've got some sharp people in this class. I mean, uh, nothing gets by Sandra Lee. Nothing gets by Jackie Fisher. CK, Zisla, you are, are so sharp. Ryan, uh, and um, also want to commend you on uh, show where there are mistakes in the, in the textbooks. Uh, you all have picked them out, and you kindly remind us that we've made mistakes. Um, but thank you for that insight, uh, Sandra. Uh, Peter was preaching to the, the audience in, in, in Jerusalem, and he told me, yeah, you are the sons of the prophets, okay? You have inherited uh, this, this command to speak for the Lord. Uh, that's what he was putting. He was, he was reminding them that you have, a, you have a gift. You have a responsibility. And, and um, remember, that's all in the aftermath of the, the um, baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fell upon the church and, and, and uh, thousands of souls are saved. Uh, so uh, Peter is pulling them in and saying, hey, uh, you are the sons of the prophets. All the, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. He fulfilled the prophets. Now you are the sons of the prophets. You're to walk in this. You're to live this. You're to teach others. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you for your efforts to get on tonight. Thank you. I, I had to shut it down and start over. Okay. Praise God. God bless you. And, and I want to praise the Lord because my mother had dementia in her 50s. And I'm still using my mind for the Lord. So I'm happy. Your praise mind. the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, mother had dementia, dementia in her 50s. Uh, uh, Sandra, I went to school with some people who had dementia in their 20s. And I went to high school with some who had dementia in their teens. But bless God, bless God. That doesn't mean we have to have it. Um, the Lord is able. And praise God for your precious mother. No, you don't have to inherit uh, what they had. And so, uh, Sandra, what we say is, hey, uh, the buck stops here. Jackie's always saying, the buck stops here. I don't have to have, uh, uh, Jackie's mom has arthritis. And Jackie's saying, I, I, I don't have to inherit arthritis. No, no. And, and the scripture says, Sandra, physician, heal thyself. Okay? 
And so we speak those things that are not as though they are. Not only in our households, Sandra, but we can speak this into other people's households. God has given us as, as in, in prophetic ministry. He's given us the authority to speak his word into other people's lives, even our own lives. Um, I speak to my, my, my right hip, my hip, hip bone. Uh, oh, you dry bone, you will live. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sandra, when I'm walking on the trail and my, my right leg wants to drag because the hip doesn't want to go along with the rest, I say, hip, oh, no, 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 no. You're a part of the body. Now you get right in the name of Jesus. You're healed. Now cooperate uh, with wherever I'm taking you. You're going to go and you're going to do your job. Okay, Sandra? Yes. Thank you. Praise Thank God. you. Praise I, God. I decree and declare I will not get dementia. Amen. The power. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we stand in agreement with you, Sandra, uh, because the power is in the tongue, Sandra. The power is in the tongue. Decree it and declare. Put the word of God on it. And ladies and gentlemen, let this be <clears throat> of something that all of us do. Speak. Speak. Uh, speak. If the doctor gives you a bad report, you speak to that part of your body <clears throat> that has been diagnosed. You speak to it and say, oh, no, you are healed. You are healed. And, and, and the scripture said we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Ladies and gentlemen, we can lay hands on ourselves. Can I get a witness from somebody? We can lay hands on ourselves in the name of Jesus and cast <clears throat> we can cast out unclean spirits. Christians don't want to talk about the demons in them because they say, well, how can I have a demon in me when I've got the Holy Ghost? Ladies and gentlemen, you ever see an ugly acting Christian? You ever see someone use, continue to use profanity? Uh, a Christian who continues to drink, uh, conti uh, continues to smoke reefer, uh, a Christian who, who continues to commit adultery? Demons can live in Christians and we have the authority to heal ourselves. We can cast out spirits. I wish I had time to go into uh, uh, the whole ministry of deliverance. I can't do that tonight, but we do this. I uh, teach on this on our Sunday morning uh, service. Uh, God has given us uh, the power to deliver others and deliver ourselves. One of these days I'll teach you about self-deliverance, how to cast stuff out of your own self. Well, bless God, our time is up. Ladies and gentlemen, our CK, where did the time go? It seems to fly. It does. It does. It does. Praise God. But I thank God for all of you. You are such a blessing to me and such a blessing to my heart. And, and a blessing to Jackie. Uh, let's just bring Jackie on for some uh, closing comments and maybe th there's some questions and then we'll finish up. Hi, everybody. It's so good to um, be able to communicate with you again. And uh, I don't think we have any new people in this particular class, so welcome back to everybody. I apologize for missing the first day of class last week, but I'm sure Pastor Carter told you um, where I was and what I was doing. So I was about my father's business. I wasn't just hanging out. But um, it's really great to, um, to be in communication with all of you again. And did you want me to close out, babe? Yes, yes, praise God. Uh, by the way, class, I will send uh, you the next uh, audio, which is tape number seven. Um, you, should, you may have received it, but I will send it out again um, this coming week. Also, look for an email from me concerning the new connection, the new hookup for our classes and for the Sunday morning uh, service. God bless you. Jackie, please close us out. I thank God for you, Jackie. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus, we just give you thanks for all that you do for us and all that you are to us. We thank you for each of our students and their zeal and their eagerness to learn more about you, Lord Jesus, and to be the prophets that you have called them to be, to have understanding, to have wisdom, so that they can use the talents that you have given them. So, Lord, we just thank you and we just ask that you bless each one individually, that you bless them collectively as a class. And, Lord, we just ask that you continue to guide them as they go about their daily lives. Bless them, their families, and, and minister to them, Lord Jesus, and supply their every needs. And we ask now, Lord, that you would just keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise